As professional speakers, your video and your internet presence is your storefront, it's your package. And if you've got a good package, then more than likely, you're gonna be able to get business. Now, I heard somebody mention speaker bureaus a short while ago. I think Dave mentioned that there was gonna be more bureaus at the convention this year. For those of you new people to NSAA, a speaker's bureau is somebody, uh, an organization that finds speakers for their clients. And they're really good at identifying talent. And the best way that they know talent is when they can come to your website and they can get a taste of what you do because your website and the videos that you have on your website are like the free samples. When you walk into a, a, a store and you're curious about how the fruit tastes and they put little free samples out, that's exactly what your website and the video is designed to do. So what we're gonna talk about first today are what I like to call speaker demo videos. And that is a, a video that's anywhere between five and 15 minutes. And it's got segments of you speaking and it has uh, some interviews if you've been on television and you've been interviewed by the news. Um, it's got interviews that you could stage and have a professional like Gary shoot. You could do green screen interviews. There's all so sorts of ways that you can communicate your message that may not have been captured completely in a speech or a presentation. Plus it gives variety to the video. Because the idea of doing a speaker demo video, it's like a movie trailer. When you walk into the theater before the main feature starts, you see those uh, little trailers come on that are a couple minutes long. And you know right away when you see that trailer whether or not you want to go see the movie. And that's exactly what a speaker demo video is all about. And that's the first thing that we're going to talk about today. Then this, after, this next section, after the first section this morning, we're going to go into video clips to continue your brand so that you can go deeper and how to use social media and the internet to get more traffic to your website and more visibility. I've got a couple handouts that I'm going to pass out during the second section, the, the workshop. One of them is a list of 30 plus websites where you can upload your speaker demo video and any video clips that you'd like to put out there for free samples and get links back to your website. That's one of the things I'm, you're gonna hear me say a lot today is, is about how to get links from other social media sites and other websites on the internet back to your website. Because what happens is the search engines find that information and they recognize you as an expertise at what you speak on and they frequent your website often because of all of this source feeding it and it helps you get onto page one which is really the ultimate goal if you're at whatever you're an expert at the bottom line is is to get on page one because if you're on page one you're going to get clicked on and get more traffic to your website that way so we're going to talk about that as well so let's jump right into talking about speaker demo videos does everybody have a handout okay as i mentioned this is like a, a movie trailer type of a of a piece. It gives the viewer a sample in a short amount of time of what you're all about. It can consist of voiceover, it can consist of interviews as I mentioned, but one thing I want to point out, number one, we'll start here, is the type of footage that you should use. I'm finding a lot of people want to go this part alone and if there's, there's one takeaway from today that I want to stress, whenever you're putting a video together especially a speaker demo video, you should use professional video footage and use your best material and your most recent material. Because what happens, you may have a shoot or a recording from years ago that was fabulous. You got a standing ovation, it feels great, but you look different. And here's the most important part, you've improved. You're a better speaker today than you were back then. It's worth the money and the investment to bring a pro in like Gary and have your presentation recorded so that you've got current footage with your current message in it. That's very, very important, plus your current look. I'm kind of a stickler about this, and this is just my own opinion, but um, if you've got footage that you look completely different on, when you show up for the event and the meeting planner doesn't recognize you because it's so outdated, I don't think that's such a good thing, but that's just my opinion. So number one, Use current footage, nothing outdated. You always want to use your best material and current look in your demo video.
Bravo. Because uh, that used to be Big Dave and now this is different. So I look at those videos as back then videos and can't do anything with them. So which is my set. And you know, it's better to just put those aside and look back on them someday and not use them and just start over again. Great, of great question. Um, that's the beauty of video, is you can pull audio off of the video and use them for um, any type of social media pieces. You can even create an audio product. So if you've got these old videos and you've got a full speech on there, you could take the audio right from there and burn it onto CD and you could use it that way or you could post clips on your blog. We're going to get into that this next section here. Um, but yeah, absolutely. Great question, Winston. Thank you. Anybody else? Any questions on where we are so far? I don't want to move too quickly, but I want to cover as much as possible here for this first section. Number two, this is, this is kind of a pet peeve of mine because at Primo Productions, we get a lot of footage in for our clients and it's on a DVD. And I, I prefer, as does our editors, to have raw footage. And what I mean by raw footage um, Gary's recording my presentation this morning and he's putting it onto a mini DV tape. And a mini DV tape is the raw footage that's not compressed and it looks good. So when I get back to the States, I'll give that to an editor and they'll put that in a machine and they'll load it into the computer. Now, if that were on a DVD instead, Gary would take it out of the, out of the camera and he would load it into a computer and then it would get compressed and burned onto a DVD. Now that compression is like making a copy. Then when I take the copy and I make another copy of it, it's gonna have a little fuzziness and it's not gonna be as clear. So it's so easy to ask if you can get an original video from whoever is video recording your presentation as opposed to a DVD. It's just one question and, and the answer is either gonna be, well, I'll see or no. Because they probably won't know when you first ask if it's a meeting planner for say. But it's, it's worth it because the footage that you get from an original is going to look a lot better than it will from a DVD. So whenever possible, try to get the original source footage. And, and we're in the middle of a transition right now, too. There is still digital tape, but what's happening is there's a lot of equipment, and Gary, Gary has some equipment that does this, where it'll record tapeless. So it's recording these digital video files into a hard drive, and they become a computer file and they're very large files. And those can be transferred into a hard drive. So if you were to ask the client, could I please have a copy of the original footage, and you find out after a, a period of time that the only way to get that footage would be through electronic means, and that would be transferring the files. It would help if you would offer to send a hard drive to them. You can go up to the store for under $100 and you could get a 500 gig hard drive and you could send it to the company who did the recording and they could transfer the files on for you and they could send it back. And then whoever you decided to work with, a professional, anybody else, um, even if you decided to go it alone and pull some clips off there yourself to put up on YouTube or Vimeo, and we're going to talk more about that in the next section of, of the program today, you've got the hard drive with them in. It's insurance. It's a backup. And it's much better than trying to take it off a DVD because most people won't be able to get it off the DVD. There are software programs that you can download that will help you get it off the DVD, but they're a little bit tricky and a little challenging. I don't, I don't do a lot of editing myself, although I do dabble with it a little bit. And I've tried on a few occasions to pull clips off of DVDs without transferring them because that's the only other way that you could do it, would be to transfer the DVD over to tape and then load the tape into the computer. 